Hi, and thanks for watching The Social Life, the place to be for entrepreneurs with a purpose. I'm Ashley Tate, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about partnerships. Now, JF Kennedy once said, a rising tide raises all ships. And when you think of partnerships, that's one of the things that you need to really focus on. You're raising all the people that are part of your partnerships. And these three tips that I'm giving you today are all tips that will help you do just that. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about three different types of ways to market your business through partnerships. So the first one is highlighting. Highlighting really is I'm going to look at something that connects with my organization and I'm going to use that as a marketing tool and as a highlighting tool for someone in some sort of industry. So in my case, I work with kids, so I wanted to provide a way for exposing them to different careers. So what I decided to do was go into my community and do a test drive Tuesday each week and use that as my social media because it was a, a dual purpose. I used it as my social media and then I also used it as my marketing and as a partnership and a way to really kind of have fingers out in the community. So when you do that, you're highlighting individual people, but those individual people have their own you know, um, social sphere, right? And when you are highlighting them and making them look good, they'll want to share it. When they share it, then people see that this is coming from Launchpad for Kids. And it comes back to you. It's inadvertent and it's indirect, but it's a great way and great marketing tool for you to use to highlight not only your um, community and the people in it, or people that are surrounded around whatever that community may be. It may be your internet community, it could be your local community, it could be whatever community means to your business, you know, and the, the grasp and the reach that you have. So um, for me, that was a very local, uh, community-wide effort. And it worked really well, I loved it, and I think that, you know, most nonprofits should find some way of doing just that highlighting people within your sphere of influence to expand that um, indirectly for your own marketing purposes. Now, the next thing is um, a beneficial partnership. Now, a beneficial partnership is basically looking at how I benefit you and how you can benefit me and then let's go through this together. So that second partnership really is something like, it could be a sponsorship, it could be a, an event that you're doing. So for me, that's a local event that I put on and I partner with the venue that I'm working with that gives them, it's, it's the venue, I have different bartenders and those different venues all help market the event. So the event is not just mine, um, it benefits Launchpad for Kids, but it's not just my event, it's really, a partnership between the different venues and the people that participate to highlight them and yourself. The last tip is attainability because basically what's happening here is a lot of times nonprofits, for profits, whoever, anyone looking for a partnership, you're reaching for the highest, almost unattainable type of partner. And what that does is that makes it hard to actually have a partner or to get a partner, right? Because you have to think about where you are, right, and what you can offer and what you're doing and find someone who is also on that same level or a little bit higher or would be willing to actually work with your maybe new startup or startup nonprofit. So when you're starting, when you're thinking about your uh, potential partnerships, think about if it's someone that you know, if there's someone that you know within the organization that you can work with, or if there's someone that you can contact directly and tell them your idea. And you have to be thinking again about the benefit that they'll get from partnering with you, right? Um, as an example, I worked with a local, um, but well, local but well-known um, coffee shop in town. And they have multiple places around town that they do coffee and they are very, very well known amongst my demographic of people that I'm looking for. They are very endeared within the community and people essentially love their coffee shops. And um, I partnered with them to do a teacher, love your teacher situation in February. Um, and it worked out well for them and it worked out well for my program. And the overall vision was we're partnering to say thank you to teachers and 
it looks good for them and it looked good for me and it worked for both of us to do the marketing effort, right? And you have to be able to bring people along. You have to be able to take in input. You have to be able to um, you're essentially truly partner, like working with them to figure out what is the best partnership that will give the most benefit to both of you and the community or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. So it's just important to keep those things in mind um, when you are putting these partnerships together. But those are the three keys that you want to think about. Highlighting, benefits, and attainability. I truly hope this video helped you and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Now you get out there and unleash your something amazing and make those partnerships work.